Hi, Mike here. A couple of weeks ago, I was asked how to filter a pivot table based on a range of dates when the field containing the dates isn't part of the pivot table. There's actually more than one way to do this. And in this video, I'm going to show you four different methods and discuss the benefits and drawbacks of each one. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. Here we have a table showing the sales of ice cream for the 1st of January to the 31st of January 2022 at the Excellent Ice Cream Company. The table has been named Sales. The pivot table, which is showing revenue generated for each flavour of ice cream, is based on the table called Sales. The requirement here is to add functionality to the pivot table that lets the user select a range of dates. The pivot table will then show the revenue per flavour for that date period. As I said in the introduction to this video, there are several ways to do this. The first way I'll show you is to drag the order date field to filter. So if I find the order date field in the fields list, drag it to the filter section of the pivot tables panel, it adds a filter directly above the pivot table. I can then click on the drop down arrow click on deselect all and just select the dates I'm interested in. So for example, the 7th, the 8th, the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, the 12th and the 13th, and then close the filter box. That works, but it's fiddly. It's not user friendly. You have to tick each individual day. If you want to remind yourself of the dates you've selected, you have to click on the filter icon and then scroll through and see exactly which dates you've selected. I'll drag the order date out of filters, drop it back into the main list, and that clears the filter from the pivot table. The second method is to add a timeline. So with the cursor in the pivot table, click on pivot table analyze and insert timeline. Select order date, that's the only column from the pivot table that contains dates, and click on OK. And it adds a timeline into the middle of the spreadsheet. I can move that timeline, place it anywhere I want. I can also resize the timeline. Then what I'll need to do is change the months drop down here to days and scroll back to the beginning. Now I want to filter the pivot table to just show the 6th to the 13th of January. So I'll click on the 6th, point the mouse at the right hand edge of that blue marker and drag it across the dates. And that is showing the 6th to the 13th. At least here, I don't have to tick each individual date. I can just drag the mouse over the dates I want to select, but it does have to be a consecutive range of dates. The other problem with the timeline is that it displays the dates for the entire year. You can see this, I'm scrolling through the entire year rather than the dates from the underlying data set. In other words, the dates in the date column in the table are the 1st to the 31st of January 2022, but the timeline is showing all the dates in 2022, 1st of January, all the way through to the 31st of December. So I'll remove the timeline. And the third method is to add a slicer. At least with the slicer, you only see the dates from the table as opposed to the entire year's worth of dates. And you can resize the slicer as well. So if I click into the pivot table and click on pivot table, analyze, insert slicer. Put a tick against order date and click OK. And there's my slicer. I can move my slicer. I can resize my slicer. I can even have the dates displayed in multiple columns. At the moment, the slicer is just in one long column. So if I go up to the slicer tab on the ribbon and change the number of columns to say four, what that's showing is the dates in four columns. And if I only wanted to select the 6th to the 13th of January, I click on the 6th, hold the shift key down 
and click on the 13th. And that has selected all the dates between the first one I selected and the last one I selected. But as more sales come in and more dates are added to the data source, the slicer will grow and will either take up more room or will require a scroll bar, which makes it more difficult to use. The final method requires a bit more setting up, but I think it's the best way to do what the CEO wants. I've created a couple of headings in column M, start date and end date. And in column N, I've typed in two dates because the CEO here wants to look at the orders from the 7th of January to the 13th of January. And the two dates in column N can just be changed as required. I've created an extra column in the table, column H. I've called it show in filter. And every cell in column H has a formula in it, which results in an N or a Y. What the formula is doing is it's looking at the value in column B for that row. And that is the order date. And it's comparing it to what's in N6 and N7. So if the date in column B is between the dates in N6 and N7, it puts a Y. Otherwise, it puts an N. And the YN is yes or no as to whether or not that row is to be included in the filter. The pivot table is based on the table called sales, as I said before, and the table now extends to column H. So if I scroll down, you can see that we've got ends in column H until we get to the 7th of January. Then it changes to a Y and it continues with a Y all the way through to the 13th. And when we get to the 14th, it changes back to an N. And that's because I've got the 7th to the 13th as a start and end date. Now, if I click back onto the pivot table, you can see if we look in the pivot table fields panel, that we don't have the new column showing filter. That's because the data source, the table called sales, has changed. We've got an extra column. So I need to refresh the pivot table by going to data, refresh all. And now the showing filter appears. Then I need to drag showing filter from the fields list into the filters panel. Set the filter so that it shows the revenue per flavor, but only where we've got Y in the show in filter column. So I'll remove the tick from N and close that panel down. And then finally, I can hide column H. I don't actually need to see that. And I can also hide row four. And that way we don't see the show in filter section of the pivot table. If I then go and change the dates, so let's say I wanted to see the 1st or the 3rd, I'll put the 1st of January 2022 through to the 3rd of January 2022. I will need to refresh the pivot table because although we can't actually see it because column H is hidden, it has changed the data in column H. Different rows will have Y's and N's on it, so I'll refresh the pivot table. And there we go, it's updated. So that's it. Four ways to filter a pivot table based on a range of dates. Which method do you prefer? Let me know in the comments. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video. But until then, have an excellent day.